for these racist photos in his medical school yearbook showing a person in blackface and another in a KKK hood. President Trump tweeting Northern contradicted himself by first apologizing, then saying today it's not him and he'd never seen the photos before. In the hours since I made my statement yesterday, I reflected with my family and classmates from the time and affirmed my conclusion that I am not the person in that photo. But the president called Northam's actions unforgivable, tweeting he wouldn't be governor if that photo had surfaced before the election. Northam says he will not resign. And tonight, Colorado leaders are also giving their input on the controversy. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett says the yearbook photo is, quote, despicable and racist. He's calling on Northam to immediately step down. Republican Senator Cory Gardner has not yet issued a statement. And former Governor John Hickenlooper says, quote, while the photo may not be the sum of who Ralph Northam is, there is no doubt Northam should step down as governor. All right, we're coming up on Super Bowl Sunday, and the cutest Super Bowl tradition by far is the Puppy Bowl. We have our own version right here in Denver. The Dem Friends League put all these little guys up for adoption at DIA's main terminal Friday. For more information on giving any of them a forever home, just head on to our story on the DenverChannel.com. We are now less than 24 hours away from Super Bowl 53. And nearly 200 million people are expected to watch the New England Patriots take on the LA Rams in Atlanta. The National Retail Federation says the average viewer will spend at least $81 on Super Bowl Sunday. 7% surveyed said they'll buy a new TV for the game. 25% say they'll watch the game at a party. Another 5% say they'll catch the action at a bar. And talking food now, the important stuff, Pizza Hut expects to sell more than 2 million pizzas on Super Bowl Sunday. And the National Chicken Council says Americans will eat more than 1.6 billion chicken wings on game day. Oh. I've already done my grocery shopping for our potluck here. Go. Game on. Yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> Coming up next, the Super Bowl isn't the only tradition that starts tomorrow that could be a diet buster. Plus, a new kind of ride-sharing service is hitting the market. This one is aimed at kids. And on SPX, reaction now that two out of the four Broncos finalists are going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Plus, the Nuggets go for their sixth straight win, this time on the road in Minnesota. Allison has all the highlights next in sports. Getting your kids to school, sports, and everything else can make parents feel more like taxi drivers. So now some parents are turning to ride-sharing services specifically targeted for children. Reporter Chris Welch shows us how those drivers are now also becoming babysitters. It was a pretty quiet ride. Just middle and high school students on their phones on the way to school. But a quiet, safe ride is exactly what busy parents like Bruce Marks are hoping for. With the traffic this time of day to get down to that school and back with the, the traffic in San Francisco, it would probably be a minimal of an hour and a half. Wow. And I, we just don't have the time. Marks is using Kango, a ride share service often called Uber for kids. And it's a relief to know that we don't have to worry about them. But unlike Uber, the vetting process for drivers here is more thorough. And drivers like Elsa Calical, who give their fingerprints and have to pass a series of background checks, in a way, act as caregivers too. Are you nervous? Yeah. Your child can get the same driver and they get to know each other. So it's not like a regular rideshare company where you get a different rider all the time. You build relationships with these kids. So a parent can select, I like these three drivers and I want them to be the only ones that pick up my kids? Yeah, they can. Sarah Scher is co-founder and CEO and says the idea actually started as an app to coordinate carpooling among groups of parents. But she was hearing a common complaint. Or they would say, I actually have so much of a need that I can never reciprocate. I can't actually carpool. I need my kid to be driven all the time. Kango is now one of a few apps that offer this kind of service. It does cost more than, say, a regular Uber ride. But Cher says they're providing something other ride shares can't. Our philosophy is you want to have, obviously, physical safety and security, but also emotional safety and security. And that goes for parents and kids. Reporting in San Francisco. I'm Chris Welch. Now, right now, the app mentioned called Kango is only being tested in California, but there is plans to expand to other cities like Denver. If you're looking for something similar right now, we've reported on a similar app called Hop, Skip, Drive that launched in Denver last year. All right, for those of us who made New Year's resolutions to lose a couple of pounds, we have some bittersweet news. That's because it's Girl Scout cookie time. Yes. <laughs> Today, Girl Scouts in Denver picked up their cookie boxes to be ready for tomorrow's first day of sales. One scout we spoke with says selling cookies has really boosted her self-esteem. 
It's really fun. It really helps me build my confidence talking to people. I learned how to manage my money and talk to customers. How cute was she? Well, <laughs> tomorrow, Girl Scouts will start going door to door for sales. February 15th, you'll start seeing them outside grocery stores. The cookies will cost anywhere from four to five dollars. They'll be busting your diet until March 10th. And we are joined now by a former Girl Scout yes. who can owe all of her initiative <laughs> to doors. going door Seven to door. Bar. I knocked on so many doors. <laughs> I wish there was social media back then because I would have been on Facebook instead. I yeah, uh, definitely. The good door knocking weather, at least. Absolutely, yes. yes. Samoa cookie, weather. Yes, cookie selling <laughs> weather. And those Samoas, oh, I oh. love them. 33 degrees by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll have lots of sunshine in store for us. And then we'll be back up to 55 degrees by 11 a.m. Afternoon highs once again around 60 degrees. Now, a completely different story in the mountains tomorrow. We're going to have snow showing up there. But today, highs were in the 30s and 40s from Steamboat to Leadville to Aspen. Here, we were at 60 degrees for a high, 63 in Greeley and 62 in Akron. So normally, we should only be in the 40s for an afternoon high, but we hit 60 degrees today. The record for this afternoon is 74 set way back in 1934. Now, it will be warm and windy for tomorrow here for the Front Range. Mountain snow though it's going to begin overnight tonight we have some advisories and warnings in effect for the high country and then we even have our own chance for metro denver snow here into next week winds are starting to pick up mostly in the high country we will see high winds across eastern colorado tomorrow we also have some watches and warnings there temperatures are still in the 40s here for our area and there's a couple of cold fronts lined up one after the other coming in from the west and you can see all the watches and warnings lined up because of these storms here in colorado we have winter Winter weather advisories up for the high country. Winter storm warnings farther to the south for between 4 to 8 inches of snow to 8 to 16 inches. And these are in effect for tomorrow. But the wind is going to be an issue here from Colorado Springs down toward Trinidad. High winds, high fire danger. We also have high fire danger with a fire weather watch in effect for the eastern plains tomorrow. No watches or warnings here for Denver. Temperatures tonight will be in the low 30s with partly cloudy skies, and we'll have temperatures mostly in the low 30s here all across the Front Range and the eastern plains. Tomorrow, all day pretty much, we'll have snow in the high country. Could have some tough travel time, tra travel spots at times, but by the morning, we'll have a break for snow in the high country. It arrives once again Monday night into Tuesday. So we'll have some periods of snowfall here over the next few days for the high country and then our own chance here in Denver by the end of the week. Tomorrow morning, 33 degrees to start out with. We'll be up to 55 degrees by 11 a.m. Afternoon highs right around 60 degrees for the day and it will be sunny but breezy. 25 to 40 mile an hour winds possible for the day and as you see here for our future cast into the afternoon and evening, we'll have snow showers in the mountains but we'll have mild weather here for the front range and for the plains as well. Our seven day forecast into the 50s Monday and Tuesday it'll be mild dry and then snow showing up late Wednesday into Thursday with a high of only 30 and a low of 12 will be in the 30s and 40s for Friday and Saturday. Okay, thanks Stacy. Sunny with a chance of thin mints and Samoas tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds great. Mm, sounds thanks, delicious. <laughs> SPX starts now. Welcome to Xfinity Sports Extra. Who wants a new jacket? Not just any jacket. The most coveted jacket in the NFL. A gold jacket. Well, the Broncos are adding two more to their closet. Broncos owner Pat Bolin and cornerback Champ Bailey elected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, it wasn't a clean sweep. Both safeties Steve Atwater and John Lynch did not make the final cut. But this was still a very special day for the Broncos. It's been a long time coming for the Broncos owner Pat Bolin. Since he's been in charge, they have 18 playoff appearances, 12 division titles, and three Super Bowl wins. They also have 300 consecutive sellouts. He also played a big part increasing the NFL's TV footprint. Now let's go to Broncos insider Troy Inc. with his take on the good news for the team. Pat at last. Pat Bowen is going into the Hall of Fame. He learned of the honor on Saturday, and it was long overdue. I think he would be calling John Elway first and telling him that he made him to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And he's going to be like, now what? <laughs> and then it was very exhilarating for all of us. And we all were thinking, well, it's, it's, it's about time he got in. He deserves it so much. And 
we're all so happy. He stepped away from daily operations in 2014, stricken with Alzheimer's. Since then, the Broncos won one more Super Bowl. Pat never wanted it to be about him. It was always about the team. But he loved that bike. He loved being a triathlete. When they would land on road trips, often he would get on the bike on the tarmac and ride to the hotel. Well, today, he reached the finish line. Congratulations to Pat Bolin, finally a Hall of Famer. That's it for this week's Rank and File. For Denver 7, I'm Troy Rank. Thanks, Troy. Now, what also makes this 2019 class so special for the Broncos, this marks the first time two Broncos have been elected into the same class. Champ Bailey, a first ballot Hall of Famer, becomes Denver's first defender voted into the Hall. He spent 10 seasons with the Broncos and was one of the best lockdown quarterbacks the NFL has ever seen. With 52 career interceptions in 215 games, he also made the Pro Bowl 12 times. It's an amazing feeling. And, you know, fortunate enough for me, this is, this is home and, and the timing was just right for it. And, I, I, you know, having all my family around, Having the Bolin family go in as well, Pat Bolin. I mean, I, I never dreamed that we would be in a class like, I would be in a class like this. So it's a little surreal at this moment. I don't think it's sunk in yet, but you know, I'm just looking forward to the process the next few months and, and enjoying my time with my classmates. It's a great class. I'd say the best ever. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a great ride up to this point. Now the Broncos will have seven members in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The 2019 class will be inducted this August in Canton, Ohio. Also tonight, Von Miller did not win the Walter Payton Man a Year of the Award. Eagles' Chris Long won that award, and Saquon Barkley won the Offensive Rookie of the Year instead of Philip Lindsay. But it wasn't all bad news for the Broncos. The team's new head coach, Vic Fangio, won the NFL Assistant Coach of the Year Award. Last season, the Bears' defense finished third in sacks and first in takeaways with 36. He's the third defensive coordinator to receive this award and the first for the Broncos since Wade Phillips in 2015. Meanwhile, Broncos country is not going to like this since they have to face him twice a year. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes was named the most valuable player. He also won the Offensive Player of the Year, and that's not all. He also won the FedEx Air and Ground Player of the Year, too, which means the Broncos really need to find a franchise quarterback as soon as possible. Now let's talk basketball. The first place Nuggets going for their sixth win in a row tonight. As they take on the Timberwolves in Minnesota, the Nuggets still without two of their starters, Jamal Murray and Gary Harris. So once again, it's the next man up mentality for the Nuggets. First quarter, Malik Beasley picking up where he left off. Big Honey with a sweet pass, and Beasley flies in and adds to the board. Then same quarter, Ali Oop alert, Paul Millsap floats it up, and Malik Beasley lays it in with ease. Nuggets up three. Second quarter, Will the thrill, crisscross steps up, triple for the score. Then in the fourth quarter, Nuggets down one. Mason Plumley like a twister. Spin move down low. Nuggets up three. Later, this will definitely be on ESPN's top ten. You can also add this to the Joker's QB tape. From out of bounds, he throws a 